Hello, welcome back for the first time in a long time to the Mortal Realms. We've got some serious catching up to do. I had a bit of a decision to make recently. I'm so far behind with Mortal Realms, I didn't know if I was going to abandon the series or keep going with it. But I've decided I'm going to keep going. I've covered more than half of the run, which obviously ends with issue 80 in around about five or six weeks time. And for everyone who's stuck with me for the first 47, I wanted to complete the series. So thank you so much to everyone who's done that. The other reason I wanted to do it is because it's going to lead me in very nicely to Warhammer 40,000 Imperium, which launches less than a month away. So what am I doing to catch up? So basically, we've got around about six weeks left of Mortal Realms. At least that's how I pick them up from the shop. So I, I, I go to my local shop and pick it up. Um, I also have a online subscription for which I get the premium content. And what I do is I generally keep most of the stuff and I normally get rid of the rest on eBay and that kind of thing. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna do more or less an issue every single day. So for me, you're gonna get sick of these videos so more or less every single day, you'll get a new Mortal Realms video. So I'll be covering issues 48 to 80, plus any of the premium content that comes out. And what I'll do is once we know that we've got no more things like the books coming out or anything like that, as soon as we know that we're clear on all that sort of stuff, um, I will do a catch up video on all of that as well. And obviously this will lead us into Imperium, and Imperium will have a short crossover with Mortal Realms. Uh, probably around three weeks, there'll be a Mortal Realms and a 40k Imperium video. Um, and then I'll continue with Imperium. So, yeah, once again, thank you so much to everyone who stuck with me throughout these videos. And apologies, it's been such a terribly long time since I've had something out. But this is the start of the catch up. OK. Now, apologies again if you hear some coughing in the background. So COVID has been working its way through my family. We've been unfortunately um, on back-to-back -back lockdowns in the house because one of my daughters had it and then she recovered. And then the day we came out of isolation, my wife caught it. So we're back into isolation now as well. So this is gonna help me get through that time as well. So we're locked down for another week or so. So this catch up is exactly what I need to pass the time. So, what I will do is I'll, this is issue 48 today, Rikenor the Grim Hailer. So just one model, but it is a belter. I love it, really cool. Lots and lots of detail. Push fit again. Quite an infuriating one to assemble, I have to be honest. But very cool. So what I'm going to do is when we get to the end of the run as well, I'm going to put together a speed painting video. It's basically going to be a, a way to paint both of our armies in a short period of time. But anyway, let's crack on with this issue. We also learn about Blades of Corn. Now, I'll be coming up very soon with a Blades of Corn video for their premium content. We'll go back to it later. And a tutorial of the combat phase. A further tutorial, we already know most of it. In this issue, Rikenor the Grimhaler will be soon so <clears throat> Rikenor the Grimhaler will soon be soaring above your games. As this Nighthaunt Wraith Wizard comes with this issue of Mortal Realms. Mounted on his winged nightmare, Kyleron. Rikenor is one of the most magnificent Nighthaunt models in your collection. Don't be intimidated by him though. Uh, guys will show you how to best build him and paint him. And before you know it, he will be inspiring fear in the foes on your battlefield. To help you do just that, there's a handy tutorial of his abilities for you to read as well. Okay, so in this issue we've got a bit about Rikenor. The Spiral Crux Part 1. This timeline explores the history of Shaman's spiral crux, starting with the Age of Myth, the 
for the slow descent into chaos and anarchy. Then we learn a bit about Blades of Corn, Cities of Sigmar Part 3, Building and Painting, then Raikonor's War Scroll, and then the Grim Hailer. As Thorncast Eternals attempt to seal the burnished path for Elmgate, Raikonor the Grim Hailer leads his Nighthorns to stop them. Okay, once a sorcerer king with a great knowledge of death magic, Raikonor ran afoul of Nagash. In his undeath, the Grim Hailer has been cursed to serve as Nagash's chief reaper of souls. In his mortal life, Raikonor sought to use his arcane power to overcome death by using the light magic of Hish. He hoped to end all mortality and usher in the world without death. As he undertook a grand quest to gather knowledge on this subject, Raikonor drew the Isle of drew the ire of Nagash and was cursed to serve the god in undeath. So we've got something here from Musings of the Realms, a guide for the curious by Tarlac Malthar. To witness the Grim Hailer descend is a singularly terrifying experience. Few have seen the Storm Rider strike and live to tell the tale. He falls from the sky in a haze of sickly green light. The gossamer wings of his hideous steed softly beating, tra trailing wisps of bale flame and luminous smoke. His wicked scythe, Fell Reaper, cuts through men as though they were wheat at harvest, as though they were wheat at harvest. Then, as a survival struggle up to their feet, a hurricane of tortured souls sweeps through their midst and drags them screaming and flailing to their graves. Okay, so, on the model itself, <clears throat> so his scythe is called Fell Reaper. The edge of this enchanted scythe can cleave through armor, flesh, and bone. Kylo Ron is the name of his steed. There's an hourglass and bell trinkets. They are on. Actually, <laughs> the hourglass. Is Glass has broken off of my model, but you can see it just on there. An hourglass represents the fleeting nature of, of life. A bell tolls for those whose time has come. Got corpse candles. There's, there's quite a few across the model, but mainly on the steed's head. Ethereal wings. Kyleron's ethereal wings allow the undead steed to soar above the battlefields and ghostly hooves. He may be an ethereal being. His hooves can still crush mortals to death. Okay, now we'll move on to a new story, the Spiral Crux. At the dawn of the Age of Myth, Sigmar travelled the mortal realms, encountering many powerful beings, some of whom would become steadfast allies. In Chamon, one such ally, ally the Dwarden god Grungi, Grungi used his gift for artifice to create the god raw isles, a paradise of order and peace. Slowly and steadily, however, greed and envy began to enter the hearts of the mortal population. As kings and emperors flaunted their wealth, the eyes of Zinsh were drawn to the, more, the realm of metal. Okay, so we learn about Shamanites. A bit about the Dwardin. Cults of change. As Zinch's eye was drawn to Shaman, he heard the whispered prayers. He heard the whispered prayers of change from the poor and the discontented. From the void, his demons answered, promising power and wealth in return for his service. Cults this dedicated to the god of change began to rise across the realm, furthering the plots of the dark god, and beginning the realm's descent into chaos. Then we're on to Blades of Corn. The Blades of Corn are the armies of the Blood God. These armies are made up of rabid mortal warriors and legions of murderous demons. They rampage across the mortal realms, cutting down any who stand in their path and offering the skulls of their victims to their dark god. And including in that, it's got the Corn Demons the mortals that fight for him, and the bloodbound. 
The bloodbound are drawn from the small number of mortals who possess the brutality and strength of will to gain Corn's favour. Should their grisly offerings be deemed worthy, they are granted dark gifts from Corn, hell-forged armour, fell weaponry, and the unnatural strength required to wield them in battle. Then we learn about Hammerhall Gyra. The second half of the twin-tailed twin city stands in Gyron, where Hammerhall Axia is industrial and heavily fortified. Hammerhall Gyra is lush and green, filled with bountiful gardens and green-lined boulevards. An immense chasm runs through both halves of the city, forming a natural trade route. In Hammerhall Gyra, this route provides passage not only for airships, sky cutters, and other trade vessels but also for winged beetle mounts of the city's Sylvanoff allies, who are, common, who are a common sight in Hammerhall Gyra. Okay, so more information about that. Then we've got our build guide and our paint guide. Now we're actually using a hell of a lot of paints in this guide today. So this is how far we've come as an issue 48. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, eighteen different paints used in this guide. But it did, does bring us to a very good standard, to be fair. That's that's almost done for me. Doesn't need anything more than that. But okay, the, then we've got Raikonor's um, War Scroll. So a movement of 14 inches, seven wounds, saves on a four up has a bravery of 10. So let's look at his standard weapons. The Fell Reaper, two inch range, four attacks on a four up to hit and a three up to wound. Rend is minus one and two damage. Then you've got Ghostly Hooves and Teeth, one inch range, three attacks, four up to hit and wound, no rend and one damage. So not bad, what about abilities wise? So the Corpse Candles, when Raikonor compares Prepares cast, sorry, when Raikonor prepares to cast a spell by stuffing out the flame of a corpse candle, it can drain his own victim's essence to help fuel his sorcery. In your hero phase, before this model attempts to cast a spell, you can say that it will snuff out a corpse candle. If you do, pick either this model or an enemy model within 12 inches of this model. That model suffers one mortal wound. If the mortal wound was suffered by an enemy model, Add one to the casting roll. If the model wound was suffered by this model, add three to the casting roll. Then we've got ethereal, obviously allowing it to go through uh, objects and that kind of thing. Frightful touch. If the unmodified hit roll for, for an attack made with Fell Reaper is six, then inflicts two mortal wounds when the attack sequence ends. Do not make a wound or save roll. And then reaps like corn. You can reroll failed hit rolls for attacks made with Fell Reaper if the target unit has five or more models. And then he's got a magical, he's got a magic effect as well, Wraith Storm. There's a casting value of seven. If successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster that is visible to them. It suffers D3 mortal wounds. If any are slain, that unit immediately suffers an additional D3 mortal wounds. Wow. Okay, harsh. Okay, then it just goes through his abilities there as well. Right, okay, on to our battle plan. The Reaper descends. As Lord Glory Mantle and his Stormcast Eternal seek to seal the burnished path, Raikonor the Grimhaler leads the Night Night Haunts a counter-attack. Okay, so we've got a decent sized battle here. So we've got Raikonor with the Guardian Souls with Nightmare Lantern, four Grim Ghast Reapers, four Glaive Wraith Stalkers, 15 Chain Rasps, four Mimorn Banshees, and three Spirit Hosts up against the Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger, Xandria Azurebolt, five Secretors, three Castigators, and three Evocators. Brilliant. Okay, and so on the next video, we have got two paints. What we'll do is I'll combine issue 49 and 50. Um, I know not a lot of people like or enjoy the paint issues quite so much because you don't get so much focus on individual models. Same thing really with some of the um, some of the terrain issues. Obviously, we've got if we've got 
quite bulky and interesting terrain that's different. So what I'll do is I'll combine issues 49 and 50 into one video and that will be out tomorrow. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Much appreciated. It's good to be back and I'll catch you later.